Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Taiwan ICDF officials visit Youth Economy Agency office in St. Lucia. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Tuesday, 16th May, 2023. Details when we return. Hubbard's Multi-Department Mount Gay and Hubbard's Tire Bay, located at the Building Supplies Compound in Grand Anse, are reminding the motoring public that another round for licensing and inspection has begun. Just arrived are new shipments of quality furrowed and torque tires to fit all makes and models of vehicles at competitive pricing. Shop early to avoid the hassle of long lines. WhatsApp them on 473-405-5482. Hubbard's Quality Service. Affordable Prices. Welcome back. The Taiwan Technical Mission continues to support the Youth Economy Agency, YE. A 16-member team of officials from the Taiwan ICDF visited the office to get up to speed on the progress of the agency. Gina Felipe of HTS News Force in St. Lucia reports. In November 2021, the Taiwan Technical Mission signaled its support well before the government established the Youth Economy Act No. 17 of 2022. Ye caters to young entrepreneurs between 18 and 35 and provides funds and training to help business owners um, turn yes, their hobbies went. or ideas okay, into sure. successful sure. ventures. A Taiwan Technical Mission visited the office, which opened on April 2023. I'm happy taking this opportunity to come here to witness I mean, the establishment of this agency and to follow your government policy to nurturing youth for their development. I believe, and uh, what I've heard earlier, the numbers and the interest of the youth, definitely I believe it's going to be a very successful project and I also believe it's going to be support development of St. Lucia. And also happy because as the well implementer for carrying out this project, we have the part of it, of course, under the assistance or the guidance of our embassy. Taiwan's International Cooperation and Development Fund, Taiwan ICDF, remains dedicated to developing youth and women. We are really glad that uh, we uh, implement youth and women economic empowerment project since uh, 2021 November. And uh, since then, we have so many uh, cooperation between uh, two governments. And we are so grateful to and happy to support uh, Honorable Prime Minister PJP's uh, Youth Economy Initiative uh, because I think it's a great opportunity for young people. Uh, when uh, it, I think everybody knows youth development is the backbone of the uh, nation's development. So we are uh, very uh, grateful and also happy to support uh, this project. The young self-starters are learning to build on their critical thinking skills to help manage their business operations. He has worked very hard with us on identifying the opportunities to create a business on what you need to look for, how you need to go about, the steps that you need to think, aside from just making money, how you're going to have a business that is not going to go under, how you're going to create longevity for your business, and ultimately how you're going to drive success for yourself. In April 2023, the Taiwan Technical Mission, at the launch of the office, signed an MOU with Ye to help facilitate additional training for up and coming business owners. Gina Filivi, HTS News Force. Lottery scamming, gangs and gangsters are being blamed for recent violence out west, including a double murder in Mount Salem, St. James, Jamaica, which is under a zone of special operation. More in this TVJ News item with Andrea Chisholm. Last week's murders and shootings in Mount Salem, St. James, have raised concerns about the effectiveness of zones of special operations Zosos. Despite the setback, the authorities insist Zosos are good crime-fighting tools. I had less than 10 murders over the seven-year period, and this is the first one about eight months. Well, 
much it reflects in the original concept is still there that will bring peace. Um, when we clear, we hold and we build. In the build phase, there still be remnants of the old criminal elements. We have indicated the policy of the government is to separate the violence produced and the gangsters, the shock the gangs from the community. That has happened in Mount Salem. But there are still young men who were part of that gang who are still in the, in the face of it and there is a this continue the purpose for violence. Some of the criminals have been on the run and so the police are hot on their trails. While they run, they can't hide, we'll find them. But in the meantime, they're killing others. Um, that is the real tragedy of the situation. And uh, while we, we could do it quicker information from personalities in there, but there's still a tendency for the affected groups to take reprisal into their own hands. And I view this up the appeal against the citizens allow the police to deal with them. We have the knowledge, the police have the knowledge, and they will track them down. Whether they go west, east or north or south, police are tracking them across the island. But that takes a little bit of time to apprehend and lock them down. From January 1 to April 30, 2023, there were 54 reported murders in St. James, 30 fewer than the same period last year. In Hanover, there have been 21 reported murders, six more than the corresponding period last year. Specifically in Hopewell, there was a flare-up of violence last week. On Friday night, a worker was killed at a construction site. Assistant Commissioner of Police Clifford Chambers said they are following strong leads. They are two persons who have been arrested and charged in custody. Um, we are hoping that we'll be able to keep them um, from being offered bail given the nature and gravity and the continuity of um, investigation and leads which have been provided given other crimes that they're involved in. And there is another who is also in custody pending interrogation and uh, further uh, uh, um, discussion as it relates to the potential of his involvement in other crimes. Again, the appeal is for citizens to tell the police what they know to reduce crime. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley received an honorary doctorate of letters from the Howard University in Washington, D.C., among those commending the Prime Minister was President of the United States of America, Joe Biden. The honorary doctorate was granted during the university's 155th commencement convocation. TTT's Mahalia Joseph Wharton has more. It is with utmost respect and heartfelt gratitude that we honor you on the historic occasion of our 155th commencement, conferring upon you the degree Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. The moment that Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley received his honorary Doctor of Letters degree from Howard University. After learning more about the Prime Minister, President of the United States of America, Joe Biden, who also received an honorary doctorate, expressed that he wasn't aware of Dr. Rowley's talents. Prime Minister, I didn't know you were so talented. I just thought you were a foreign policy, you know, Latin American guy. I, you know, I, we got to talk. <laughs> All kidding aside, thank you for being a strong partner in the Caribbean and for addressing climate change and supporting democracies across the Western Hemisphere. Before Dr. Rowley received the honorary doctorate, President of the University Dr. Wayne Frederick shared some of the Prime Minister's many accomplishments. For more than three decades, you have been a member of the House of Representatives for Diego Martin West in the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago. Since 1981, you have been a major player in the political arena of your country. Most notably, you have continued to strengthen the partnership between Trinidad and Tobago and the United States through our shared interests in many areas, including security, energy, education, agriculture, and the arts. Dr. Frederick, who is also a national of Trinidad and Tobago, shared how this country's first Prime Minister, Dr. Eric Williams, would be honored at Howard. You have encouraged me to establish an Eric Williams endowed chair at Howard University in Caribbean Studies, and that is something that in my post-retirement I will continue to pursue. Dr. Frederick described Dr. Rowley as a renowned social and political leader, pioneering statesman and scholar. 
Mahalia Joseph Wharton, TDT News. Ghana and the Bahamas to discuss trade and investment opportunities at the summit of the University of the Bahamas. ZNS News provides some details. High-level delegates from both countries will discuss trade and investment opportunities at a major summit at the University of the Bahamas beginning this Wednesday. Ghana diplomats arriving at the Linden Pinling International Airport this afternoon. The nation's chief, along with other government officials expected to participate, the Bahamas ambassador designated to Ghana, His Excellency Andrew Wilson, and Ghana Member of Parliament and Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, expressing optimism. Over the coming days, we will be hope to have fruitful discussions and explore opportunities for us doing business one with the other. Marcus Garvey many years ago said that the key to our liberation is when African people unite and start doing business one with the other. We look forward, sir, to making the dream of Marcus Garvey, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, a reality. There's a lot we share in common, uh, culturally and historically. And we think we've come of age that we should be engaging at a serious level to see how best we can leverage that relationship in the economic sector. In the meantime, the Bahamas Prime Minister Philip Davis addresses the ninth summit of the Caribbean Heads of State of the Association of Caribbean States. Prime Minister Philip Davis sharing that in the face of inflation, food insecurity and climate change, now is the time for fair and flexible climate finance. The conference theme, Innovating Integration Through Sustainable Development of the Greater Caribbean. To the body, he shared its moral and pragmatic imperative that our nations unite in support of the Bridgetown Initiative, which envisions multilateral development banks pivoting to offer substantially more robust support for energy transitions, scaling up the use of guarantees, and increasing concessional financing for climate resilience projects. Increasing the capacity of international financial institutions to effectively respond to the challenges of the climate change era, he said, is the only way to build a bridge from today to a more secure, peaceful and sustainable future for all citizens. He was emphatic, ensuring that countries like ours have the resources to become more resilient. It's not just about climate justice, it's about common sense. He continued the 2022-2028 Plan of Action outlines a series of strategic undertakings on trade development and disaster risk reduction, amongst other collaborative ventures. The Prime Minister said the body must ensure that it does not remain merely a plan, urging the time to act is now and we must act together. Publix is once again innovating the way you shop with its new online store, providing 24-hour shopping convenience. You can shop now for appliances, hardware, houseware, building material, and more. Free delivery island-wide. Start shopping now at hubbardshardware.gd. Safe, convenient, reliable. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.